tunnel with Steambrite Supply, and today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about vacuum motors. So we just grabbed a few of them off the shelf, and I have a lot of times I feel like I talk to people on the phone and they're kind of confused about some of the terminology that we uh, see posted on our website, so I'm going to try to go over some of those terms. And to begin with, one of the things that you'll see different about different back motors is the voltage. Uh, we have back motors that are in 12 volts, 24 volts, 36 volts. Those are all DC, usually they're in auto scrubbers. Then we also have 120 volts, and then we have international back motors that are 240 volts. So uh, that's one difference. You want to make sure you, you select a vacuum motor with the correct voltage. The other thing, a lot of times you'll see it posted, it'll say the blade diameter, and that's referring to the bottom of the back motor. So in this case, this particular one is a 5.7 inch diameter. Vacuum motors also come in 4.2, 5.7. Um, here's an example of a 6.6, .6, and here's one that is 8.4. There's also a 7.2, which we have not pulled or on the, the table. One of the other differences, you'll see a terminology, they refer to the number of stages. The number of stages refer to here on the bottom, like this has got a distinctive separation between the lower can and the upper can, and that's, this is referred to as a two-stage vac motor, while this one over here is a three, as well as this one is a three. You'll also see vac motors that refer to how the air is discharged, and there's actually three different ways that the air is discharged. One is through uh, a discharge horn, or um, referred to as tangential discharge, and actually is exhausting out the side of the vac motor. Then there's peripheral discharge, and that is actually where it peripherally discharges on a 360 degree out the side all the way around. And the other that I don't have an example of is flow, flow through. And on the flow through, they actually get rid of the fan blade. And as the air is passing up through the vacuum motor, it's actually literally blowing out the sides and the top here. So it's kind of like self-cooling. But if you accidentally pick up any foam or other contaminants or dirt, or depending on how it's being used, you could definitely damage the vacuum motor. So you don't see those used as often, other than in some vacuum cleaners, like really small when they need a lot of real tight space. Um, you'll also notice the difference in how they mount a little bit. There are some vacuum motors that use plastic tabs for mounting. They have three mounting holes. You'll also see vacuum motors with metal mounting holes. We also have some vac motors that we sell, and we didn't bring an example, that has four mounting holes, and that's where they'll have opposing holes. You'll actually see that where you'll have it exactly on a 180 degree axis. You'll have mounting here, and then you have the three, so it can actually be mounted either way. That's more common in some of the Power Flight and Tornado series. Um, you also see it in some of the X-Power uh, cavity blowers. They use a four bolt pattern system for the vacuum motors. The other thing that you'll notice difference on vacuum motors is how the shape of them. So like some of them are flat on the bottom. Some of them have an intake tube and I'm sorry we didn't grab one of those but they'll actually have a, like a welded or a press-on inlet tube and that allows you to be able to put a piece of hose on it. Uh, some again, and then there's also some that are conical, and this is an example of a conical. And if you look at it, you'll see it's not flat; it's cone shaped. And the difference on those is that when these uh, vacuum motors spin, like this one turns at 21,000 RPM, when that's spinning around that fast, if you're taking and grabbing and gulping a bigger set of air, and then squeezing it and slinging it up into these stages. And the way this is, is this fan blade is slinging it out centrifugally out to the edge. The next stage grabs it and slings it in. And the next stage grabs it again and slings it back out before it shoots out the tangential horn. So it has a better job of grabbing the air and creating more 
resistance on the air so that it kind of really grabs it harder. So how hard the air is grabbed is also referred to like inches of water lift. And that is uh, another terminology that you'll see on a lot of our vac motor pages. That basically means that at sea level, if I stick a clear one inch inside diameter piece of pipe sticking up out of the swimming pool and I stick my vacuum hose on the end of that pipe, how high can I pick up a solid inch of water straight up in the air before it reaches where it's not moving anymore. In other words, it's now reached zero CFM and I can take a reading and say how many inches above sea level that is. Now naturally you can't really do that uh, in higher elevations because the air is thinner so it's always taken at sea level. The other um, numbers that you usually see on vacuum motors is how many cubic feet per minute actually pass through the back motor unrestricted. And that would refer to cubic feet of air. So if, I had, if you could picture a box that's 12 inches by 12 inches by 12 inches, that's one cubic foot. And if I turn it on and I don't restrict the vacuum at all, how many of those boxes of air leave this vacuum motor unrestricted at zero inches of lift? So the CFM and the inches of lift are opposite. So when I'm kicking my inches of lift, I'm at zero CFM because it's not moving. The air is not moving. My CFM, how many cubic feet of air pass through the back motor, are done at zero inches of lift. You will also see, and you can go on Google or the internet, uh, there's a conversion chart to calculate the relationship between inches of water lift and inches of mercury. Now mercury is a liquid metal and a lot of times they'll take that as a reading for some of the positive displacement vacuum pumps. These are all centrifugal vacuum motors. We also do sell positive displacement vacuum motors and for some reason the industry has always calculated inches of mercury for the positive displacement style. When uh, another way to calculate or numerically compare vacuum motors is by vacuum units. And vacuum units is a formula of taking your max inches of lift and you multiply it times your max CFM equal your vacuum unit. So if I have a vacuum motor and it is will produce 100 inches of water lift and moves 100 CFM, that's called the 10,000 vacuum unit vacuum motor. And you'll also hear that sometimes um, you'll see amp draw is a, as a means of comparing vacuum motors. So if they're all the same voltage and one is pulling 7 amps, another one's pulling 8, well one's pulling 10, that has a lot to do with performance. In fact, uh, I refer to it as amp draw is king, and, and I'll try to explain that. As you look at, let's say here we have these different two-stage back motors, and here we can see this, the windings part of it is fairly short on this one, and it is a little, and it's taller here, and this one's actually kind of, I guess, the medium one. This one's the tallest, and this one is kind of a mediocre. Um, as it has more windings in it, it's going to fight back harder, and it's going to use more electricity. So this one here actually pulls about 11 amps. This one pulls 7.5 amps. This is all at, at 120 volts. Uh, this one also is, is around 7.5 to 8, but it's a high-performance one. Um, you'll see that on a lot of other vacuum motors. You'll see how they change a little bit based on the amount of windings they have. Um, it's possible, in fact, this vac motor here, I'm sorry, this, this vac motor, it's this one, this vac motor here, which is a two-stage, and this one here, this one pulls 11 amps of power, actually outperforms this one.
which is a three stage. So a lot of times people always say, oh, my three stage is stronger. Well, no, not necessarily. It's actually possible for a vacuum motor that's smaller to outperform a larger one. Another prime example of that is this one here. This one's a real short, stubby one, pulls almost 15 amps and produces way more CFM and inches of lift than these other vac motors do that use less electricity. It's on a much smaller, compact design. Oh, another thing <clears throat> to kind of bring this up. <coughs> these uh, vac motors have straight carbon brushes in it on most of them. Uh, this one here has round, rounded curved carbon brushes. You can't see it because it's underneath the housing, but the um, that's normally these vac motors will get about 750 hours of lifetime use before you have to change the carbon brush. Uh, this style here gets about 1,500 hours on it. So that's certainly different because they're curved. They're, they can make them fit longer in the inside of the housing here. This one also has a curved vacuum motor, I'm sorry, carbon brush system in it, so it lasts about 1,500 hours as well. So um, I also wanted to mention, sometimes you'll hear, like in carpet cleaners, how the equipment is mounted or the vacuum motors are mounted, whether they're air series or parallel. So what that refers to is air series means that the system is in series, like the exhaust of the first vac motor literally is sucked into the second vac motor and the air flows in a series. It sucks up the one, leaves the first one, goes in the second one, and then goes out. And usually when you do that, the performance of the cubic feet per airflow will go up about 25% and the inches of water lift goes up about 70% when you put it in this format. Another way to do it is in what they call like air parallel, and that would be like if I had a vacuum stack, this was actually pulling out of a vacuum tank, and this one was pulling out of a vacuum tank, and they're pulling out of two separate tanks, or I'm sorry, two separate uh, vacuum ports, and uh, what that would do is keep the inches of lift the same, but it would double my cubic feet of airflow. Then there are even some machines that have four vac motors in it, which can be like... Uh, two in series, another two in series, and then those two groups of pair are in parallel. And that would be like a balanced air system. A balanced air system is where your inches of water lift and your CFM are basically equal. And usually you're going to get a little bit better performance when you have a balanced uh, vacuum system where your inches of lift and your CFM are very equal in their performance. So hopefully this is just kind of a quick overview and will help you kind of uh, narrow down maybe your carpet cleaning search or maybe if you're, they use these vac motors also for boat lifts and shop vacs and all sorts of different things. They can be used for both blowing or sucking. So they're used in a wide variety of different industries. All right, thanks for watching.